Hey everybody, once again, thank you for clicking on the video. In this video, I'm going to do another layer of paint on this beautiful table. And while I'm at it, we'll be checking out more videos from Curious Plus. Make sure to head on to the channel and also like, leave a comment and subscribe. We'll also be checking out other YouTube videos that I find quite fascinating. And by the way, if you're new to this channel, click on the subscribe button. It wouldn't hurt. That would really help us a lot. With that being said, let's begin. Researchers were shocked when they began to find human skulls like this. These skulls look very elongated for a normal human being. And what intrigued everyone is that these were found all over the world from America to China. So, whose skulls these are? And more importantly, are these results of a disease or were these created intentionally? Well, when we dig down into the distant history of human civilization, we come to see that the first rulers of every ancient culture were described as supernatural or out of this world. They were physically bigger than average humans, and look at the shape of their heads. In all of these carvings, we find their heads quite elongated, and researchers have no idea who they are. But when they left... Whoa, I think the pressure from that binding, making the eyes bulge out, you know? Man, who ever took this photo? The human cultures around the world began to artificially elongate the skulls of their children as a sign of nobility and power. So, is it not possible that our planet was once ruled by some powerful non-human entities? In this video, I am going to share with you a mind-blowing fact about the ancient Indian text, the Ramayana, which forces us to question the history of entire human civilization. When the Lankan king Ravan kidnaps Devi Sita, the wife of Lord Rama, he and his brother Lakshman set out to rescue her. In the way, they take the help of a half-human, half-monkey-like creature who was the ruler of a place called Kishkinda. His name was Sugriv. Hearing the news, he mobilizes his army of spies to look for Sita all over the world because Ravan was powerful enough to have kept her anywhere on the globe. Then he warned his men to not to go to a cold place at the end of the earth, which is mostly covered with night. You will be shocked to know that he is talking about none other than Antarctica. It is the only place at the south pole of our planet, which remains almost covered with darkness in the winter. But how did they know about this place thousands of years ago? In Chinese mythology, they have this guy, uh, this monkey king is called San Wukong. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but these ancient stories, they all tie up together, you know. In a lighter note, you know about those uh, glitches in the Matrix? I haven't seen anybody glitch as much as this guy. Check him out. Oh no, it's a glitch in the matrix. Could it be possible that people in ancient India had mastered advanced organ transplantation thousands of years ago? If you know something about Hinduism, then you probably have come across this strange looking god called Ganesha. As you can see, he is always depicted with the head of an elephant, and his birth story is quite intriguing as well. His birth story is written in Shiv Puran, which the author declares to be a real historical record. But it is possible that it could have been drastically simplified for the layman of that time to understand. Lord Ganesha was artificially created as a human-like being by Goddess Parvati, but Lord Shiva, her husband, couldn't recognize him when they first met in her absence. In a great fight, Shiva beheaded the unknown being. When Parvati came to know about this, it was already too late. She was furious and upon her demand, a new head was planted on the body of this deceased being. But it was the head of an elephant, and the boy was brought to life again. You know, it might just be stories, but, but the ideas and the concepts are there and then. And now we're doing heart transplants, liver transplants, every body part you can think of. Soon they'll be putting human brains on robots, I bet. It's crazy, people don't want to die, especially rich people. <laughs> In the year 1895, something remarkable happened, of which very few people are aware of. Reports and findings from around the world suggest that a really advanced race of human beings used to rule our planet. Ancient Indian literature and records tell us about many generations of human civilizations, which were destroyed or wiped out due to cataclysmic changes in Earth's ecosystem. Many native tribes around the world hold the same beliefs and point to how technologically advanced their ancestors were. In India, 
There is an ancient text called the Vaimanika Shastra. This book features some of the most amazing designs for aircrafts and spacecrafts. So in the year 1895, a Sanskrit scholar named S. B. Talpade, who had a great interest in aviation, designed an aircraft inspired by the ancient Indian texts. But the really surprising thing is, he successfully flew this aircraft in front of spectators eight years before the Wright brothers flew their airplane. But his achievement was suppressed and neglected and got lost with time. I bet there's many suppressed technology out there that they really don't want us to know about. In many of my previous videos, I have clearly stated that the history of our civilization is not linear, but cyclical. New evidence suggests that previous civilizations may have evolved to completely new heights beyond our wildest imagination, which are reflected in ancient texts. But unfortunately, we have been discarding them as fictional stories and fantasies. In this video, I will give you some facts written in an Indian text known as the Padma Puran, which force us to rethink about the human past. The text categorizes various life forms found all over the cosmos and not just Earth. It even talks about microscopic organisms which could not have been possible thousands of years ago. It mentions a type of creatures known as Cremias, which act like viruses and bacteria in their primitive form. But on a dark and damp planet, they have evolved to an intelligent and technologically advanced state. We're discovering more and more species all the time. Maybe they do know more than, than we do now. I want to show you a scary video I found. What would you do if you saw this? But you know what's scarier than that? Check this out. This man is already dead. People with rabies can't drink water due to a symptom known as hydrophobia, which is caused by the rabies virus affecting the brain stem and disrupting basic reflexes like swallowing, gagging, and sucking, making the act of drinking water very painful. Unfortunately, once this symptom appears, rabies becomes almost unbeatable. Ooh, can you imagine that? Oof. Oof. In this video, I am going to share with you some intriguing facts which conclusively shows that a technologically advanced civilization existed thousands of years ago, and we are actually living in a post-apocalyptic world. Have you heard about the flood myth? Well, you will be surprised to know that the descriptions of a great deluge is found not only in Christian texts, but in every ancient culture around the world. Among these, the Hindu texts are the most fascinating and the least explored. These texts talk about the island of Dwarka and how it was submerged deep into the sea. But the main difference between those of the Christian and the Hindu descriptions is that Noah was informed by a god about the upcoming flood, while the people of Dwarka and other islands in the Indian subcontinent were well informed about this impending calamity, and all of them were evacuated safely to other lands. These texts say this was only possible because they possessed in-depth knowledge about our planet and sufficiently advanced technology to carry out the operations. Yeah, it does feel like we're living in a post-apocalyptic, dystopian society. Now I am going to give you a description of an event from the ancient Hindu text, the Mahabharat, which will make you question the very history of the whole human civilization. Krishna was the ruler of Dwarka, and he had a very powerful enemy known as King Salwa. According to the text, Salwa had a powerful flying machine called the Salva of Amana. He used it for interplanetary space travels and aerial warfares. What's so shocking about these descriptions is that how the author describes a war between King Salwa and the army of Dwarka. The text says that without any warning, Salwa attacks Dwarka with his flying machine. This flying machine could hurl devastating missiles from its many mouths, and it is described how the arrows sounded like thunder and looked like burning suns. They created havoc wherever they fell and could only be stopped by destroying the mothership. What's so intriguing is that the authors of these ancient texts stated clearly that they were writing what they really saw with their own eyes. They really saw with their own eyes. It's as if it was just in front of them. What if I tell you that there were artificial cities flying around the earth thousands of years ago? This seems quite unbelievable. But if we go looking through the written records of ancient civilizations, there is a description which will blow your mind. Various ancient Hindu texts describe different races of intelligent beings who were competing against each other to rule our planet. Among those, the most ferocious and advanced were the Asuras, who generally dwelt underground. They had very luxurious and big cities beneath the surface of our planet. The ancient texts, such as the Shiv Purin, 
describes an Asura named Mayasura, who had built three moving cities, one in the underworld, one on the earth, and the other in the sky, which was orbiting our planet. The three cities were wirelessly connected with each other, and it posed a great threat to the other creatures living on Earth. But the most shocking thing is that humans are depicted in those texts as very primitive creatures. With all the nasty things that's going on in the world right now, yeah, you can say that yeah, pretty much we're still primitive. People sometimes can get really savage. I think we need a global upheaving. What if I tell you that there is a mysterious and baffling link between ancient India and the Mayan civilization? Hinduism is the indigenous religion of ancient India, and shockingly, it had a dark, unexpected relation with the cultures of Central and Southern America. For instance, Uxmal was an ancient city in Mexico when the Mayan civilization was at its prime. But you will be surprised to know that this city was built within just a single night, according to Mayan legends. Now let me take you to a story within the Mahabharata, an ancient Hindu text. It is written that the city of Indraprastha, whose location could be traced to modern-day New Delhi, was built within a single night by a non-human creature called Mayasura. The Hindu texts are more interesting because they have recorded much more details about those beings than any other ancient texts. Central America was termed as the Patala Loka in Hinduism, and Mayasura was exiled there. So, could Mayasura be the founder of the Mayan civilization? All right, check out this awesome instrument this guy's playing. Looks South American. He has three octaves on that flute. <laughs> How long did it take for him to make that instrument? It's quite detailed too, it's very nice. Check out this guy. Just too bad he has a slingshot. Ready to go. This could change everything we know about our planet. In the year 1966, seismologist Dr. Paul Richards and his team announced a remarkable discovery. They found that the rates of rotation of the outer surface of our planet and that of its core are different, which means there is a gap between the outer layers and the inner core of Earth, suggesting the hollow Earth hypothesis. It is quite shocking how the ancient cultures have been talking about the planet being hollow and technologically advanced civilizations flourishing within it. For example, the ancient Hindu texts describe a region in our planet called the Patala Loka, or the underworld. This place is thought to have been beneath the surface and intelligent reptilian creatures and many other humanoids have been living there. The Nagas are a form of reptilians who had a great impact in shaping the current human civilization. The ancient Indian texts describe them as the ones who first shared advanced knowledge with the primitive humans. These creatures are still believed to have been living beneath the surface. I think they get a lot of inspiration for movies from the sacred texts that they would admit. Maybe Stanley took a trip to India, I don't know. Probably. The Venkateswara Swami Temple in India is one of the most intriguing places for researchers and visitors. It's an ancient temple dedicated to Lord Venkateswara, a form of Lord Vishnu, who had incarnated on planet Earth to guide the human civilization towards knowledge and peace. One of the strangest things about the temple is that no one really knows who made its main idol. Many believe that the idol was not made by any human hand, and the hair placed on the head of this idol is real hair. There's a legend which tells us when Lord Venkateswara was abiding on Earth, he lost his hair due to a mishap, and a Gandhava, or a celestial being, offered her hair to the Lord. It is believed that the same hair was placed on the head of the idol when he left this planet. Another peculiar thing about the idol is that it seems to be alive. When you put your ears close to it, you can hear a very low sound coming out of it. One thing for sure, the intricacy towards building these temples out of this world. I mean, they say it was just made by hammer and chisel. 
but maybe with a lot of manpower chiseling away all those blocks you have to admire the beauty of it you know you say it's just mind-blowing it's mysterious but i say it's beautiful oh wait 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 by the way i want to show you a video made joey rogan cry you watch joe rogan well check this out who had a better excuse to give up than this guy did you see the disabled veteran that i helped no, I did not. You want to watch it? Sure. Hey, let's watch it. For 15 years, doctors told me I would never walk unassisted again. I was a 47-year-old disabled veteran. Says I fell many times, but I got back up. It's all about getting back up, right? Just, you're seeing him trying to walk without his canes and, and falling down. The attitude to do something, even though it's difficult and in pain, is so damn important. Wow, look at all this weight he's lost. That is crazy standing on his head. That is crazy. Wow! Look how fucking slim he is! That is really amazing. Holy sh! He's running! That is insane! He's not just walking, he's running. Sprinting. Holy sh! That is incredible! I'm crying, man. That <laughs> did choke you up, right? It did. I told you it was a payoff. What you're doing is really fucking awesome. It just, just should be something that everybody does. Can anybody tell me what that sign means when he does that put it down on the comments we all should be inspired with this one you know another uplifting moment i don't know how many of you guys have seen this video of this tribe called mamuna i think it's mamuna tribe i love this video i'll play you the unedited video and at least they built the handrail when they walk back they sing through the forest That was amazing. I agree, that was amazing. Okay, I'm going to show you the other video where this guy put more layers of... Oh, no, I think it's his own voice. Check it out with more harmony. When they walk back, they sing through the forest. <laughs> Anyway, let's get back to more videos from Curious Plus. Again, head on to their YouTube channel, give them a like, subscribe to their channel. Let's take another dive. Have you seen this statue outside the world's most advanced physics laboratory? This is the statue of the Hindu god Lord Shiva in his form as the Nataraja, outside the European Organization for Nuclear Research or CERN. CERN is now investigating the existence of a god particle, which could solve all mysteries regarding the creation and destruction of the universe. According to prominent nuclear physicists at CERN, there is a kind of continuous dance of creation and destruction going on at this subatomic level. It is quite surprising that this statue of Nataraja perfectly illustrates this marvelous discovery. In Hinduism, Lord Shiva is mainly known as the Lord of Destruction. When he performs his Tandava, or the Dance of Destruction, the whole of creation begins to tremble and shatter. But few people know that he also performs another type of dance, called the Ananda Tandava, which creates this universe. So how is it possible that the ancient culture of India knew about the process of creation and destruction at the subatomic level thousands of years ago? I think those eggheads, they have to stop playing around with these atoms. They say it's a great feat for scientific exploration, but they're trying to make mini black holes or wormholes or whatever. I don't get it. They might open up a dimension, you know, they might regret it. This thing is 27 kilometers long. To me, it kind of sounds like a doomsday device, if you know what I mean. It's a big conspiracy theory involving CERN circulating around the internet maybe if you're interested in this stuff you can look it up there's a lot about it 
So, again, to me, it looks like a doomsday device, if there ever was one. Anyway, on to our last video. Did this girl really remember her past life? Shanti Devi was born on 11th December 1926 in Delhi and looked like a normal girl until the age of four. Then she exhibited behaviors which shocked everyone in her family. She began to talk about her husband and her children who were living in Mathura, 150 kilometers away from Delhi. She had never been to Mathura before, but she started to describe where she used to live in her previous life. At first, her parents simply neglected her, thinking that she was only imagining those things. But things got out of control when she repeatedly talked about her past family and wished to go there. Her case was brought to the attention of the Indian leader Mahatma Gandhi, and he set up a commission to verify it. When the researchers took her to Mathura, her alleged residence in past life, they were stunned to find out that all of her claims were absolutely true. Her case conclusively showed that reincarnation is a fact. Okay, I'm gonna give you a tip. Go to ChatGPT and type in Samsara and then also ask ChatGPT about Moksha. This whole reincarnation the cycle will be explained easily. Because me, I can't, I really can't explain this stuff. I don't have the capacity. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you find some of it interesting. If you're new here, click the subscribe button and leave a comment as well. You guys stay healthy in your mind, your body, and your soul. I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, there was a time you thought to be